You're welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now, before we went on the quick break, I mentioned to you that our first guest in the studio today is Barista Evans Ufeli. He's a constitutional lawyer, one who is very, very, very active and you know very interested in the governance of Nigeria. He'll be coming to share with us his opinions and basically what we should express, what should we should expect with regards to the coming elections and the past one as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, before, before we get have a conversation with you, we're going to be calling Erumo Igbejule, who is a journalist with The Guardian UK, and he'll be giving us a fact as to what has happened so far in Nigeria. But before we speak with Erumo, I should ask you, with regards to the past elections that just took place on Saturday, would you say that you're pleased? Not really. I'm not really pleased because of the, the level of uh, preparation, or so it seems. First of all was the postponement of the election we were supposed to have held last week, I mean two weeks back, last week, and then postponed to this uh, uh, Saturday. And um, then the, 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 the said Saturday that the election was supposed to uh, start or come up, we had uh, issues of uh, late arrival of INEC officials. And then we, had, we saw that uh, the buses they were using to convey election materials, sensitive materials, or so it seems were rickety buses. Uh, the preparation was not tight. Uh, the logistics uh, for which the uh, INEC chairman um, you know, assured Nigerians after the postponement, there is only an act of God that will bring another postponement. Uh, we also found out that the logistics was not tight enough to deliver uh, uh, movement for the core members and the INEC officials. In some places, elections started around 1 o'clock, uh, some places 12 noon. Uh, and then the time specified for this was supposed to be 8. And then they are supposed to uh, begin to close it up from 2. That is, whoever come after 2 will not be allowed to, and then wrap it up accordingly. But we didn't see that. Uh, we also found out that even the election took place yesterday in some places. It spilled over to Sunday. Okay, so at the end of the day, what they were trying to avoid initially by postponing the elections ended up happening? It, it happened because... Even after the postponement, there were no proper arrangements. Uh, they only uh, decided to just go ahead with the election. Uh, but while the election was ongoing, we now noticed that they were not also absolutely prepared. But because of the public outcry and then the economic losses, and then uh, because of uh, the fear of sanction, perhaps, they went ahead without preparation. And then we see the result all over the place. We have discrepancies. Uh, we have uh, uh, issues of uh, violence in some part, like in four states, in uh, Port Harcourt, in Lagos, in Bayasa, in Oyo. Specifically, there were violent in some areas. All right. Uh, of, let's, of let's actually get to speak with somebody who would give us the facts as to exactly what went down with um, at the elections last Saturday. We have with us Erumo Ibejule, who is a journalist with The Guardian UK and a future awards winner for the Prize of Journalism 2017. Good evening, Erumo. Thank you for joining us. Hi, good evening. All right. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Erumo, can you please give us the... We know that you've been working actively with regards to collating data for the elections. What do you have for us with regards to the pres just concluded presidential elections? Um, I mean... The elections are concluded, you know, but um, they didn't go according to schedule. Some elections were still being held um, at that Sunday morning and Sunday evening in parts of the country. Um, but it, it does seem as though INEC has now, I, around 11 a.m. this morning, INEC started collating the results in order to announce them. So far, six of the states have been announced, and, um, and also the federal, um, the FCT, right? They, they've been announced. You have AKT. You have the FCT, you have Gombe, you have Kogi, Kwara, Nasarawa, and Ocean State. And um, so far, of all of these states, um, the president has won all except for the federal capital territory, where um, Atiku Abubakar had 61.3% of the vote, and um, uh, President Buhari had 35.91%. So th that's the state of things right now. All right. What um, do we have more information as well with regards to how peaceful or violent the elections were? Um, in terms of violence, uh, we see that there was more violence down south in the rivers here in Lagos, and um, I think in Anambra as well. Um, so Al Jazeera has said that there have been 27, about 26 or 27 deaths in all across 
across the country. Well, um, I, I, I've been hearing results. I've been hearing reports that um, the death toll has increased to somewhere in the region of 36. Um, you know, regardless, it's just, you know, there, there are just a number of disasters that could have been pre um, prevented, especially in River State, for example, where um, soldiers had a shootout, you know, with, with um, hoodlums in the community of Abonima, which is just outside Port Harcourt. Um, so, yeah, those, those, you know, those, those are the major incidents of violence. Then you have um, Buba Galadima, who was, who is one of the spokesmen for the PDP, taken away by um, masked men, um, believed to be secret police, even though there is no confirmation of that. You know? And um, in, in Lagos here, I think in Ikeja, um, when one of the candidates from the PDP, Mutio Konola, I think that's his name, um, threatened violence when he saw that um, there was some form of irregularity with the results. You know? so, so that's just a, a, a recap summary of um, the major violent issues with the election. All right, Eroma, thank you so much for joining us. We hope to be connecting with you sometime soon during the week again as the stories progress. But thank you once again for joining us. All right, us. thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Have all a right. great night. And you too. So I, I don't know, you heard all that Eromo has said. What do you make of all this? Well, what I can make, make of it is that um, we need to improve on our election processes. Because, I mean, this is... Uh, what we had in 2015 seems to be better than this. And we shouldn't go this way. We should have an improvement. Perhaps if the president has signed the uh, electoral amendment of the bill, maybe some of these issues and hitches would have been curtailed because by then we should have had a proper um, way of electronic transmission right. yes. and then have maybe all the other improvements and innovations running within this. Uh, 2019 election. But since we didn't have that signed into law, we have to rely on the 2010. Okay. Basically, what the president made a statement, and as the commander in chief of the armed forces, he gave a directive, you know, to ballot box snatchers. He basically read them the riot act. Several people have given different interpretations to it. Some saying it should not be taken quite literally, others saying that it should be taken literally. But we saw what happened with Demola, the alleged OPC thug, who they said tried to snatch ballot boxes, and the videos went viral on social media. So, what do you think is the impact of what the president said? With regards to our, uh, what, what impact does he have on our elections? Do you think it's against the rule of law that he made that statement? Do you think that it was bad that he made that statement? Uh, first of all, let's get it very clear. The office of the president is created by Section 130 of the Constitution. Section 217 of the Constitution empowers the president to use the army, okay, in ways that will reflect the, the purpose for which the army is created in, in the Nigerian society. Okay, and one of which is to make sure that the, the army is used to curtail external aggressions and then to have maintain peace within the territory. That is the purpose. Uh, it is not for the president, by Section 217 of the Constitution, to make that kind of pronouncement. When you have an electoral act that have laid down the processes and procedure upon which election should be prosecuted in Nigeria. So if you look at it, whichever way you look at it, Definitely, the president's pronouncement must have influenced certain kind of reactions because there's a way information, people who consume information don't consume it at the same level of intellectual frequency. Some persons know how to absorb it and then filter, and some persons take it as a sponge and then carry out accordingly. But if you look at it, you find out that apart from the case you mentioned, people didn't really snatch ballot boxes as, mu as much as they, did, they, they used to do before. What they did instead was to break the ballot boxes there or take the ballot papers out of the boxes and set them ablaze. So perhaps, maybe because uh, if you snatch, you are supposed to pay with your life according to the president, and people had to reverse and they decide to break the ballot boxes or take the papers out and then set them ablaze, apart from the case we, we look. So uh, the, the Constitution in itself, in Section 217, did not give the president that power to use the army that way. So it was actually a wrong approach so this is a civil society. Nigeria is not at war. It's when you are at war or there is an uncontrollable insurrection or mutiny that you are supposed to use, you know, police, and then the army will come in when the police is overpowered to, to quell the, the situation on ground. And we, the president needs to be as civil as possible because it is election. It is not war. 
It's unfortunate that we're starting to see that, you know, this is this has gone wrong in a lot of ways. We're seeing that they are making it a tribal war when it shouldn't be. It, the, the war shouldn't be between tribes in Nigeria. We're all one people. But let's look away from that and ask ourselves, are we really ready for the gubernatorial election? Yes. Uh, it's not whether we're ready. It's whether NEC is ready. And Nigerians are ready. If you look at the turnout, there were places where people came out with their PVC in the East to protest that they have to vote, that uh, INEC officials never showed up, and they have to vote. So they, you see, Nigerians are prepared and ready. But the question we should ask ourselves is whether INEC is ready. You know the governorial election is usually more intense, because here you have to look at the 36 states, including the FCT, and then look at uh, the various positions within the state, and the, it is intense. And then you know that most of these gubernatorial candidates have um, a, a lot of influence. They will have influence in their respective the states. states. Yes. You understand? They control a lot of things. They control the good, the bad, and the ugly. And they have influence over this structure of persons in society. So that is a much reason we should have more security this time around. We should have... Uh, um, the INEC very ready. I don't know why they all woke up late. And one thing we should also do is that we, should, we must ensure that the security men that we have in the polling unit, even if they are not armed, they should have something like tear gas or something they can use, something soft to disperse people. I mean, it people. was ridiculous to see uh, the video of um, some thugs throwing away the ballot boxes. Yes, and the policeman had nothing to do. It was helpless. It was just... And it's just one person. Exactly. But they told us that there are going to be two, two in each polling unit. But then you have just one person who was unassisted, and yes. there was nothing he could do. So, so sad. We're hoping that the, the INEC could take a cue from this and be better prepared for the next elections. Yes. Finally, before we let you go, in a few seconds, you know, we've been able to, we've heard some of the results being read out. What has been the most shocking one for you, or the most interesting one? Well, that is the, the, the Middle East, or oh, say Middle East, uh, North Central, rather. The North Central, where, you know, people have, you know, made these insinuations and permutations that the president is most likely going to lose the uh, North Central. But it appears to be going the other way around. I mean, that is a surprise. And also the fact that uh, uh, some of the states, uh, th that of uh, the FCT rather, not the states, where the president resides, where Asorok resides, they lost that as well. So, but we're, we're hopeful that when INEC fully collate all the results, that is when we will be able to see the true picture. Was, it, was the winning of Senator Dino Milaye shocking to you? Well, I, you know, he's my friend. He's a, okay. a person, I, I, I followed him up all through while the process was ongoing. When I heard he lost, I called and he said, no, that uh, he's, uh, he's leading, he has won five states already. So, and if you look at any other, other persons also, you'll find out that the, the Senate president uh, uh, own was the one who was shocked, shocked to me personally because he's someone I, you know, uh, uh, like his disposition, having held this government, if not for him, this government was going in a way where, where the executive would have overshadowed the entire process. But he held strong and he was able to stabilize the country by giving serious opposition and then making sure that the, the National Assembly function as that body it is meant to be to carry out its oversight function and then make laws accordingly. Mr. Evans, there's so much that we need to talk about. We definitely need a part two. I mean, I'm here, I'm thinking of many questions I want to ask you. I want us to look at the judiciary. I want us to look at all that's been going on with, with regards to, you know, uh, judiciary and the independence of the judiciary. I want to weigh in on your thoughts on the current case that is like the biggest case in, this, in the judiciary, but we will have that conversation much later. Thank you so much for joining us. All right. To enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch, Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.